Hi everyone, now basically I'm going to be tying these two flies. Now I've got lots of questions obviously on, on YouTube. Uh, main question being here was could I uh, basically tie a couple of your favourite nymph patterns uh, that you would fish in the winter, both for, well I'm fishing for grey, I can fish for greyland with these as much as I can fish for rainbow trout and the lost. Now not many people know it but uh, know this, that I actually was a fishery manager for 15 years and most people asked, didn't stop to ask me what I was fishing especially in the winter, I would always be fishing something like this this is a pheasant tail and the bug as I would call it mainly black in the fishery, in the river I'd be fishing the brown version now the brown, everybody knows, normal pheasant tail now, these are just flies of fish, both river and lost. So it's answering those two questions. What, what would be the fishing for the grayland? And these my go-to type flies definitely and they're the easiest to tie. Now being in the river I always used weight and uh, to get weight in the fly I would use a copper wire. Now this is a, off a big spool that I have, an extra small wire. If you're going to buy it, UTC extra small is exactly the same diameter. So I'm going to say I'll quickly tie them. You can see with the light. This is the the pheasant tail is going to, I'm going to tie it on a size 12. This is the new full and mill hooks. This is a basically competition heavyweight, very popular fly uh, hook, sorry, for the locks. Uh, and basically, uh, you can fish them in the river obviously, but these are the barbless range. Now, as I say, it's simple to fish, uh, simple to tie, sorry. We basically start to the hook and using the waist piece, basically keep, keep it reasonably tight and this will help control the turns onto the hook keep them very close just run it down to the bend of the hook to basically this point here where the barb would probably be now as I say, pheasant tail, any colour favourite in the locks was black uh, this is just dyed black pheasant tail tear it away once the tips have lined up a good half dozen uh, there's just a seven there as I can see tail length don't go too long no more, no longer than the body. Just catch that on the top a couple of turns. Just check my length. I'll do it. So see, the reason I like a shorter tail is mainly to do with it. It doesn't wear as quick as a, a long tail. Now wind this up to the beginning of the thorax just quickly. Now use a varnish or a super glue here. This basically allows it to last a, to last a bit longer. Just then wind over it. Now I'm going to wind the pheasant tail towards myself. It's a weak fibre. And this, when I, wear, when I go to rub this, uh, the rib will catch in far better. So we get to this point, we come across. Because we're coming towards myself with the pheasant tail, we have to lock it in. So we come over with a turn, and then a turn on the hook. And the weight of the bobbin and the, the copper wire will hold that. Bring a rib up. Now you're looking round, that's two, three, four, into the fifth turn, just where you caught the pheasant tail in. Follow up, catching it in. And then you wind towards the eye. And then you, what you want to do is make, just encourage the pheasant tail, even the waist piece, to stay on top. Because this is your thorax cover. And you take it all the way to the eye, right up to the eye. And then we come back through. Now I'm going to come down to the point where I just caught it in. I'm going to come back up. This will just thicken up a wee bit. Add a wee bit extra weight as well. Come back down so we won't end up at the back here. So then we bring over what the remains of a pheasant tail and just rub it with it with your nail in the top, including the waist piece, tie it back. And you catch it with this, just hold it with a single turn and then go straight in with what finish. So what you want to do is one turn in front of the other, one, two, three times is fine. Tighten up, and then trim and leave at least a mill at the waist. Gives the impression of small wing buds. Just gives it a nice shape. Start the tail here. See a nice, a nice shape into the fly. Now you can just varnish the thorax or you can use a resin. I'll just use the resin and the varnish. Now I'm just using a, a clear, a regular. Now it would be fine. 
Now the reason, if I'm using the light just now, it will soak in, which is fine. Just helps to keep the colour of the, the copper. And then to set your resin. Now I'm going to do it again, just to make it a wee bit pronounced like, so it catches the light a wee bit better. Now the copper obviously is a natural, it's an orange. So it does give an impression of the wing buds. So just on the underside, there we are. Set your resin. And that should do it. There we are. Just give it a second or so to set it. And then, like I like, just to seal the resin and keep it shiny, some clear varnish. Just to, that seals it all. And even the very tip of that brush there, I just come round where I've tied it in. It's it's okay, you don't need to do that, I just like to do it. And there you go, that's the pheasant tail, so... Put that down, and then we tie... This represents, it's just a bug. As you saw, it's a very simple fly. Now I tie it with the copper wire. Now see, I originally tied these for the river, and but they work both on river and the locks. This, these were my favourite flies. Now I've got the same copper wire that's extra small. Now you want a reasonable length of waist because of what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch it here. There they are. Come down, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to double it up, make it a wee bit heavier, and so that you can see it. Now I'm going to come down two thirds of the way because I'm going to, I need another third so to get the shape. But I'm going to build up the, the centre of the hook with some some wire. So I'm going to go back up, stop about maybe four mil from the eye, and then come back down. And come back up a wee bit because I want a nice weight into the the this pattern, this shrimp pattern, and head back down. Continue around the bend, just it makes it easier to get a shape and give it the weight. That's fine. Now the body, I'm using the natural grey rabbit and a UV, this is a UV, it's just a simple, uh, it's just a UV flash, this one's from F&F, &F, so it's an idea, it's just a UV blue. Now, I basically chop it up, cut it into a reasonable length. Uh, I've got a natural grey, it's just rabbit, just a lot of guard here, there. So I just, I just blend it together. And uh, this is the lighter colour. This is, this is basically my colour bug. I like a darker grey as well, so it's worth having a dark grey. But in the water it does get dark. So, I just lightly dub it onto the wire. It's, so, it's easy, you don't need wax or anything, it'll dub on. And then what you want to do is get it anchored to the hook. Now you could put a wee bit of varnish or super glue on the body, just like I did with the pheasant tail. But there's, there's quite a lot of turns in there, you, don't, you can get away without it. And then it's just a matter of getting a shape. Just check. I mean, I, I turn the hook to the side to see the thickness I like. Now if I want a wee drop more in the centre, I can go back. Just add a wee touch more. I want it to taper towards the eye, you see. As much as it's tapered towards the back. Uh, stretch it out as you wind. You see here. Yeah, that's fine. When you get to the, the hook, the eye of the hook, take away the excess. Just stroke back what you don't want and then Oops, I'm ready for what finishing there. I'm going to bring my rib up first, sorry. Just wind up through. Gives you a shrimpy light look. All the way right up to the, the head of the fly. Catch it in. I'm just stroking any fibres going forward. I'm just going to build the head up a wee bit. So basically wind down to the eye and bend and break that off and then what finish. Now you could put a, like a back on this, a scud back like, but you know something, I, I, I never did it, uh, I was quite happy. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just making sure they're all in line, the turns, 
just bending and breaking the wire. I'm just supporting the knot, the, the whip finish there on my nail, so it's, it's bending where I want. And then it's just a matter of using some Velcro and brushing the fibre underneath to give you that leggy light look. I mean it's shiny enough, I know it's just a ball of fluff, but it's a great ball of fluff. And then what I do is I come underneath, take away the, the, the extra long fibres, and then there we go. And that's it. So it's very simple, as simple as that. I cut away this hair here. And then it's just a wee bit of varnish. You can use resin if you want. Just allow it to soak in. I'm quite happy to dab it into the eye of the hook. And then clean the eye out. I'd rather have the, the varnish soak in. And then I can use even a piece of wire or your dubbing needle to clean it out. And there we go. Two flies that basically I uh, fish happily in the river as much as I do in the small trout fisheries, small lochs, and I catch in the winter months as do as much as in the summer months. Uh, and then they are simple, as I say, and there we are. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and there's the other one. Don't forget to use the natural one as well. Uh, they both work. So basically, there's that's them together. Uh, so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it as I say and until next time.